Gallstones are a common problem worldwide. Is it possible to treat these without surgery? That is the focus of this video. However, to understand the context of this question, it is important to know a little bit about the function of the gallbladder, the gallstones, the natural history of gallstones, when is it surgically indicated to remove gallbladder, and the consequences of gallbladder removal. The gallbladder is a sac-like organ that is connected to the side of the bile tube that carries bile down from the liver. The bile is stored in the gallbladder, which concentrates it, and when food arrives in the stomach, it sends a signal to the gallbladder to squirt the bile out, to meet with the food down in the small bowel to help digest the fat. Gallstones can form within the gallbladder, which are common in females and more common in certain areas in the world. They may also run in families. The exact cause of formation is, however, not totally known. Gallstones cause symptoms when they may obstruct the outlet of the gallbladder temporarily causing pain which is often called biliary colic. This may last from between a few minutes up to six hours. Stones may also slip out into the main bile tube causing jaundice or a dangerous condition called cholangitis which is a bacterial infection of bile. Finally further down the gallstones may set off pancreatitis which is an organ at the back of the stomach. Just to complete the list Gallstones may often also cause inflammation or infection of the gallbladder and rarely perforation of gallbladder. The great majority of the gallstones do not cause any symptoms. It is also possible for gallstones to just spontaneously from the gallbladder down into the small bowel over a period of time. And finally, before gallstones start giving serious issues or complications, 90% of the patients will have biliary colic or minor pain that self-corrects before a serious complication occurs. Can you even prevent gallstone pain? And the answer is partially yes. Since bile is necessary for absorbing fat, the arrival of fatty food or dairy products in the stomach cause a significant trigger of gallbladder contraction, causing a stone to be shunted towards the exit of the gallbladder causing pain. Reducing fatty food and dairy products may reduce the incidence of gallbladder-related pain, but this does not always work. When should you consider having the gallbladder removed, according to medical evidence? So if you have no pain and gallstones are discovered just by chance following a scan for another indication, there is no justification for surgery. What if you have the odd twinge of pain every now and then? It is reasonable to consider gallbladder operation to prevent future complications. Once the pain starts, then a quarter to 50% of the patients will need removal of the gallbladder for symptoms or complications over five years. The lucky few, up to 30% or a third, may just settle after a few twinges. However, if there is recurrent episodes of biliary colic or a gallstone complication, such as infection, cholangitis or pancreatitis happen, then it is important that removal of gallbladder is prioritized to prevent future significant complications, which at times can be life-threatening. So what are the consequences of gallbladder removal? After all, it is an organ and we have discussed its function. Luckily, for 90% of the patients, it has no consequence when the gallbladder is taken out. It is possible to have temporary indigestion and bloating, especially after fatty food, but this settles down after a few weeks. Rarely, patients may develop bile acid diarrhea. In the absence of gallbladder, the bile that arrives in the system may trigger diarrhea after fatty food in the diet. This would require treatment with medication such as bile acid binders. In a small proportion, the cause of the pain is misdiagnosed Gallstones are wrongly blamed for the pain that has another cause. Hence, may pati hence, patients may have symptoms that they originally presented with even after removal of the gallbladder. What if the patient is unfit or the surgery for a particular patient is very high risk or the patient does not wish surgery at all or surgery is not available or the patient cannot afford to have surgery due to the cost? Are there other ways of treating gallstones? Is it possible to dissolve the gallstones so that they disappear over time? That would be the best solution. 
the so-called bile pill, ursodeoxycholic acid, or ursodiol, is one such tablet, but it has limitations. It works by directly acting on the stones, being excreted in the bile through the gallbladder, causing the gallstones to break down, and then for the effluent to pass through into the bile and out into the small bowel. It requires certain preconditions. It is only suitable for those with early symptoms. It works only on cholesterol stones and not on pigment stones or mixed stones. And stones that have a lot of calcium would prevent this pill being effective. Larger stones, greater than two centimeters, are resistant. Stones such as those that float in the gallbladder or are one centimeter or smaller are the best size. The gallbladder has to be functional. It has to work, it has to be able to contract, which is often not the case if there have been attacks of infection or inflammation. The cystic duct has to be patent so that the dissolved stones can pass through this channel called the cystic duct, which can get blocked after a bout of infection. And this treatment requires long-term use, six months of longer for it to be effective. And even then, just over a third of the patients may find full solace in its use. That said though, many more may find that their pain is reduced with the use of this treatment. You can also predict from this where this treatment will not be effective, such as patients who've had a gallstone complication, those with large stones, especially with calcium, and those who are intolerant of the medication or if it, or if it reacts with one of the medications that the patient is taking already. What if he had one or two large stones without much calcium and a functioning gallbladder. Sand waves are commonly used to break kidney stones and these have been deployed for breaking down gallstones. And once fragmented, the broken particles are then passed into the bile tube and out into the bowel. So just to summarize, the extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy works for one or two large stones with no or minimal calcium. It requires a working gallbladder and a pated duct. Unfortunately, half the patients who undergo this treatment may suffer bilirubinic or significant pain, and just over a half of these patients will have a recurrence of gallstones after initially successful treatment. Not unsurprisingly, this treatment has fallen out of favor. Is it possible to remove the gallstones through the skin without the need for major surgery? Rarely in very sick patients who have one or two stones causing recurrent problems, under ultrasound guidance, a tube can be placed in the gallbladder to suck out the infected bile. And then this tract may be dilated after a period of time and the use of appropriate baskets under appropriate anesthesia to capture the stones and drag them out. This is an uncommon technique deployed in exceptional circumstances. The internet platforms abound with treatments such as natural treatments liver and gallbladder flush, traditional medicine, whether it's Chinese or Indian or homeopathy, promising effective treatment of gallstones. Unfortunately, there is no good scientific evidence that they work. And one has to remember that biliary colic, gallbladder pain secondary to gallstones, when it's uncomplicated, settles on its own for long periods of time. This completes a brief overview. I hope this has been of use. If you have any comments, please do share.